We wanted to talk to the health minister about this, but Jonathan Coleman referred us to the Southern DHB itself and Chris Fleming was available. I began by asking the chief executive of the Southern DHB how many ICU beds they do actually have. Uh, eight ICU beds, um, and that's an increase recently. We increased it from six to eight. Right, and that was an increase in response to the fact that six wasn't anywhere near enough, right? Um, well, about about a couple of years ago, um, the issue about the service um, that was being able to be provided out of our ICU, um, the capacity and the constraints in our ICU was raised, and so the organisation has been along a pathway where we have made significant commitments um, we've initially increased the ICU to eight, but we've also uh, recently commenced a redevelopment of the facility, which is going to take it up to 10. OK, when will it be 10 by? Um, the construction phase is expected to finish in August 2018. Right, so it's gone from six to eight, and in roughly 13 months from now, it will be at 10. Yes. Is that enough? Um, look, um, in the medium term, it will be enough in the medium term, um, but we are also obviously going through the redevelopment of Dunedin Hospital and the business case. That, that's a theoretical redevelopment, isn't it? It's not happening, is it? Uh, no, the, indi the indicative business case is being considered currently. Um, and, and, and when will that be formally finalised? The business case? Yes, or the, um, yeah, the I, business case. Um, My understanding is that it's not until the end of 2018. Uh, the, the detailed business case won't be completed until the end of 2018. That's right, right. right, OK. So if one is relying on the detailed business case to give you new ICU beds, you wouldn't hold your breath, would you? Uh, oh, well, I, I will hold my breath because I know that we are going to redevelop Dunedin Hospital. Um, it is much needed, um, but we have the 10-bed capacity for the foreseeable future. Ten or eight? Uh, as I said, eight until August 18, ten um, from August 18. Right, so at the moment it's eight and that's gone up from six. Yes. OK, Waikato DHB has 16. Their population is 400,000, your population is 319,000. Yes. So you have half the number of beds that they have, but 80% of their population. You simply don't have enough ICU beds, do you? Currently we do not have enough ICU beds, absolutely. And how has that been allowed to arise? Uh, look, um, I think in terms of over the longer term, uh, we should have been doing planning for uh, the redevelopment of, of our facilities. Um, uh, we, it should have started uh, much earlier than it has, uh, but we are on the pathway now. Right. It should have started much earlier than it has. Absolutely. And um, what, what has happened in the interim? Have people died because they couldn't get operations? Not because the surgeons weren't available, not because the theatres weren't available, but the post-operative care in ICU denied them the care they should have had. Um, I believe that patient's care has been delayed as a consequence of um, delaying, delaying cases because of lack of ICU capacity. We do not start... Um, elective cardiac cases um, in the event that there is not an, a known ICU bed available. It's not only cardiac, is it? It's actually all serious surgery that requires ICU treatment Ab afterwards. Absolutely, there's, there, there is pressure on ICU. Uh, there's pressure on ICU and HDU capacity in terms of making sure we're providing services in a timely way. Take the case um, that has raised the interest in the media recently. You know, the cancellation, the number of times his case has been cancelled, is is terrible. Uh, it's I feel, terrible. I feel awful about it, um, but on a case, on a day by day basis, I'm, I must empower my clinicians to make decisions that are right on the day. So I do apologise to um, to the patient um, because um, uh, the the number of cancellations is just not acceptable. Right. So, so, so your position is that the number of cancellations is not acceptable, your ICU is not big enough, you are simply not able to get people through at the speed with which you would like because there aren't enough beds for them on the other side. And the solution to this is not going to be available until the end of next year. Well, no, as I said, we've already increased it and we are looking in to see whether there's an ability to increase it further in an interim, but the physical... So, so you are looking at another increase? We're, we're, looking to, we're presently looking to see whether we can in increase it by an extra bed um, in the current constraint, but we also need to make sure that the, the facility is appropriate, that we can staff it appropriately, 
um, and that we are supporting both patients and staff to optimise the care. This is still not satisfactory, is it? It's still not as you would have it, is as it? We are can, as when, with the necessity to cancel um, cases because of lack of ICU beds, no, we need to continue to do better, and we are striving for that. Are you aware of people who have died whilst waiting for surgery that they weren't able to have because there were ICU beds available? Um, I am not aware of, of, of deaths that are attributable to the lack of ICU capacity, um, but I'm, I, I, I'm not a clinical person, so I would need to come back um, in terms of checking with my, my chief medical officer. Do you transfer people to Canterbury, for example, because there aren't ICU beds available for post-operative care? We, we indeed transfer patients to Canterbury, and Canterbury at times transfers patients to us because ICU capacity is used as a network across the country. One final question. When will your ICU bed numbers be what you would hope they would be? Um, they will be they will be at the level that we have signed off by August 2000. 2000, August 2018. We just lost the last second, I think, of that interview. So Chris Fleming, the CEO of the Southern DHB, saying they will be at the levels that they would like by August 2018. They are currently half the levels that they are in Waikato. Dunedin has 80% of Waikato's population. Sorry, the DHB area has 80% of their population.